Good morning, and welcome to the historic First United Methodist Church in downtown Elgin, Illinois. Uh, we welcome all of you at home and listening on WRMN radio. Thank you very much for tuning in. The announcements today, uh, due to F uh, Pastor Felicia's absence, we are postponing All Saints Day. It will be next week, November 8th, so you still have time to call the office and add a name if you would like it included in that service. If you have any joys and concerns, you can visit the uh, website, fumcelgin.org, and there is a care tab that you can click on and you could submit your joy or concern, and then it will be shared with the congregation in an email blast as well as be included in the joys and concerns each Sunday during worship. We are still Zooming. We have three groups that do Zoom calls. One is the Monday morning Blue Box Coffee Group. The other one is the Thursday morning uh, Big Apple uh, Reflections Women's Bible Study, as well as the Wednesday evening Guys Stuff. If you'd like to be included in any of those, and we wish you would, uh, you can go to the uh, website and to the calendar, and you'll find the link in the calendar section of the website. Every Thursday at noon, we do a prayer call, which is also Zoom. Uh, this is normally hosted by Pastor Felicia, but in her absence, it is being hosted by Pastor Don Gardner. Um, that also can be found in the calendar. The link was in there, and it starts at noon. And um, whether you have something to pray for or not, you can call and be included in, in a prayer call for individuals, for anyone you know, for anything that's on your heart and mind. Uh, also, don't forget tomorrow, Monday, the motivational moment from the Bible. Those are loaded at 6.30 in the morning, and they're just a cool little start to your week. So um, other than that, please prepare for the call to worship. The Lord looks down from heaven and surveys the people to see if there are any who are wise, who seek after God. All humankind has gone astray. All the people are alike in their foolish ways. Have they no knowledge? Does anyone call upon the Lord? The people are in great danger, for God is with the company of the righteous. Oh, that deliverance would come when the Lord restores the fortunes of his people. The nation will rejoice and the faithful will be glad. Step down into darkness, open my eyes, let me see beauty that made this heart adore you, hope of a life spent with you. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say. to see my 
my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Please be with me in prayer. God of all creation, hear the cries of your people. We are empty and long to be filled, hungry and long to be fed, lost and long to be found. Pour out your abundant blessing upon us that we may eat our fill at the table of grace and find our true nourishment in Jesus, the bread of heaven. Amen. As we move backwards instead of forwards in this pandemic, it is so important that at a time when we feel when we need to adjust our expectations on a daily basis, we remember to keep our blessings in mind and close to our heart. Even though once again we are not here, the work of the church still continues. Giving back to God is not only an act of worship, it is also an act of faith. In saying that we know that God is good, we know that we have been blessed, and we want to extend that blessing to others through the work of the church. If you'd like to contribute to the many ministries here at First United Methodist Church, and as we contribute to many ministries around the world, you may contact us at the website, fumcelgin.org. There is a place on the website to give, or you may mail your offering to the church. We truly understand that these are difficult times, and we are grateful for all that you have done and can do. So please be with me in prayer as we bless our offerings. Lord, we give our offering in gratitude, in remembering, in hope, and in faith. Regardless of what is going on in our lives right now, receive these gifts as our way of praising you. Amen. deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only Son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss, the Father turned face away as wounds which are the chosen one bring many sons to glory behold the man upon a cross by sin upon his shoulders ashamed I hear my mom among the scoffers. 
First scripture reading this morning is from the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 through 12, and I'll be reading this from the message. When Jesus saw his ministry drawing huge crowds, he climbed a hillside. Those who were apprenticed to him, the committed, climbed with him. Arriving at a quiet place, he sat down and taught his climbing companions. This is what he said. You're blessed when you're at the end of your rope. With less of you, there is more of God and his rule. You're blessed when you felt you've lost what is most dear to you. Only then can you be embraced by the one most dear to you. You're blessed when you're content with just who you are. No more, no less. That's the moment you find yourselves proud owners of everything that can't be bought. You're blessed when you've worked up a good appetite for God. He's food and drink and the best meal you'll ever eat. You're blessed when you care. At the moment of being careful, you find yourselves cared for. You're blessed when you get inside your world, your mind and when you're blessed when you get your inside world, your mind and heart put right. Then you can see God in the outside world. You're blessed when you can show people how to cooperate instead of compete and or fight. That's when you discover who you really are and your place in God's family. You're blessed when you commit to God, when your commitment to God provokes persecution. The persecution drives you even deeper into God's kingdom. Not only that, count yourselves blessed every time people put you down or throw you out or speak lies about you to discredit you. What it means is that the truth is too close for comfort and they are uncomfortable. You can be glad when that happens. Give a cheer even, for though they don't like it, I do. And all heaven applauds. And know that you are in good company, my prophet, and witnesses have always gotten into this kind of trouble. Here ends the reading of the scripture. Morning, everyone. Hello. If you're in your bedroom, say hello back. If you're on the radio, say hello back. Good morning. What a blessed day. I will be reading um, the second scripture lesson, but the question for I'm posing today is, where is your burden? So we're going to start from Matthew 23, verses 1 through 12. When you have it, say amen if you're in the audience. If you're at home, you can listen up, and it's also in the bulletin. Then Jesus said to the crowd and to his disciples, the scribes and the Pharisees sit on, the, on Moses' seat. Therefore, do whatever they teach you and follow it. But do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they preach. But do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on the shoulders of others. But they themselves are unwilling to lift a finger to move them. They do all deeds to be seen by others, for they make their fallaciers broad and their fringes long. They love to have the place of honor at banquets and at the best seats in the synagogues 
and to be greeted with respect in the marketplace and to have people call him rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all students. And call no one father on earth, for you have one father, the one in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be servant. All who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. This is the word of God for all God's people. Thanks be to thee, O God, for this, thy holy scripture. Could you join me in prayer? God, we bless your name as our Heavenly Father. Christ, our Messiah, I faithfully trust in your leadership. Please continue to guide our paths as we strive to be humble servants. Through your holy name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. makes us uncomfortable? Where is that that makes us lose sleep? Where is that portion of us that makes us say, I don't know what's happening. I can't seem to move forward in life. It is as if my hands are tied. I have too much on my shoulder. Where is that burden? I feel so burdened. It is as if no one is willing to help me. I am lonely, I am depressed, I am hungry. I can't bear it no more. Do those words sound familiar to anyone today? Or do you know anyone who is saying that? And for me, I'm going to say yes, it sounds familiar to me. I'm here to tell you that Jesus knows our burdens and that Jesus wants to instruct us on how to be faithful burden bearers here, right here on earth, so that when we get to heaven, he will have a choice, Jesus will have 
the choice to exalt us above those burdens and those persons who have been oppressing us on earth. So for our time here today, I want you to think of a time when you were burdened or think of a time when the nation is burdened and think how we're going to move that burden from us and put that burden in the hands of God, in the hands of Jesus Christ who will instruct us should I pose the question again, where is our burden? Do you know anyone who does not have a burden? Anyone who is totally happy, totally content with his, him, her, she, their selves? Is there anyone in here? Because please, if you're in your home, if you're on the radio, text us and tell us, let us know that there's a person out there who doesn't have a burden. But for this moment and this space in time, I am going to say we all have a burden because Jesus Christ said he came to save those of us who were lost, otherwise he wouldn't be here. So it's an, it's an assumption that we all have something that is separating us from the love of God. That's what we call our burden. It's not necessarily that we are broke or we are hungry, but whatever it is that's separating us from, the, from feeling and experiencing the love of God or whatever it is that makes us think we're in charge or whatever it is that makes us look to someone else for help. Because in the Gospel of Matthew, in this 23rd chapter that I just read, verses 1 through 4, Jesus himself acknowledged the burden bearers. Jesus tells of a time when there were two class of people, the ones that were tied up and the ones that were telling these people who were tied up what to do. Jesus said to those overburdened servants, do what they teach you and follow it. My brothers and sisters in Christ, how many times have someone told you what to do and asked you to follow it, but they're not doing what they tell you to do? I'm going to say my parents used to do that. Do as I say and not as I do. You can't question them. Just do it. So the challenge with this scripture today is that while Jesus tells us to obey the instructions given by those persons who refuse to help, they refuse to help us with our burdens, with whatever makes us lost, whatever concerns the neighborhood. Elgin is a beautiful neighborhood, extremely beautiful, gorgeously beautiful, but there's something out there that's bothering someone, but they can't find anyone to help. We're inside our homes. There's something that's bothering us. So what Jesus is saying Follow those who teach you. So follow the church. Follow the laws of God. So the challenge, again, as I say with the scripture, is that while Jesus is telling us to obey the instructions given by those persons, some of us call ourselves disciples, you know? Whatever our, our church says we are, we go out and we tell people what to do. I'm standing here. I'm literally telling you what to do. So those persons are to follow the laws of God. But they are getting the laws from us who refuse to help them. Jesus is saying, follow them. But, but there's a conflict here. Because Jesus is saying, follow what they tell you. But at the same time, Jesus is saying, but do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they teach. So if you're, if you're a kindergarten teacher, you literally have to go down on the carpet with your students. You have to eat with them. You have to do what you tell them to do because guess what? That's the only way they're going to learn. But Jesus is saying, no, I want us, I want you to listen to me. Jesus is saying, my friends, listen to me. Do what they say, but not what they do. That's the challenge. Do you have an issue following instructions given to you by those who say, do as I say, but not as I do. Very few of us are going to say yes. And there is going to be some dear devil will say, you know what, I'm okay with just following instructions. But today Jesus Christ is talking to those of us who had an issue with following instructions by those who literally didn't do what they say we're to do. 
So are you in a crowd today asking Jesus, why should we listen to those people who are unwilling to lift a finger to help us? Are you asking yourself, what instructions is Jesus talking about? What instructions does Jesus want me to follow? Perhaps you are saying to yourself, I just heard my sister Cindy read one of the most popular Bible passage, the Beatitudes. And for some of us who know the older scripture, it says to be meek. Cindy just read and she said to us, be content with ourselves. So maybe that's what Jesus is talking about, right? Because he says in, 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 in verse 11 and 12, be humble. This, this, this Matthew 5 verse 5 says be meek. And are you asking Jesus, how can I be meek when I have burdens on my shoulder? Why shouldn't I scream at the top of my lungs, Jesus, I need help? My friends are struggling with Jesus' instructions when Jesus says, do whatever they tell you. Your friends, your family, they look at you, they say, oh, you are a Christian, but you are struggling. They look at you. You yourself, you're struggling with the, the concept. I have COVID, but Jesus says I'm to be me. I have my grandchildren in my house. I, I am lonely. I'm at the end of my rope. I, how am I supposed to be me? Are you screaming, Jesus, Jesus? What you're asking is difficult, Jesus. What you're asking is difficult. Are you one of those persons? Because it's reasonable. We face a world where it's like everything that we knew and it worked, we are tested. The restaurateurs are saying, how do we live? 2,500 restaurants in, in Illinois, however many thousand workers. How can we as disciples stand here and say to those restaurant workers, do what I say? Because Jesus said so. So we have a challenge as disciples. Jesus is talking to us in this scripture. Because our backs are, are bended. We are, we are burden bearers. We now have to say to those persons, do as I say. But at the same time, some of us go home to the comforts of our homes. We have heat. We, nothing has changed in our lives. But what Jesus is saying, I hear you. Jesus is saying, I hear you. And Jesus is saying to all of us who have a burden, because let's face it, if you go home to the comfort of your home and you just told someone who is in a shelter, be meek, unless you are unconscionable. When you go home, you're going to feel guilty turning on that heat, right? So Jesus is dealing with both sets of people. He's dealing with the disciples and he's dealing with the, those who are receiving the word, the givers of the word and the, and the receivers of the word. Jesus is saying, pause. Jesus is saying, pause. He says, stop. Look at me. It's as if Jesus is in the audience today. Because this is one of the most testing times of our lives. We are divided not because we, we woke up one morning and said we're going to divide our world. The world just got divided by something that is larger than us. Something that separates the haves and the have-nots. And this time it doesn't matter if you're black, yellow, pink, white, Protestant, Christian, Jews, or Gentiles. The world has been separated by this great thing that we call COVID. There's always going to be someone burdened. And those of us who go home and we, we, are, we are okay. We didn't plan it. Jesus Christ is saying, stop. Refocus your attention. Take your eyes off that other human being who you are looking to, to solve your problems. Put your eyes on God. Face God as your only father. Stop depending on anyone else. Because no one on earth can help you. That's what Jesus Christ is saying. Only God in heaven can help us. And you know what? I believe that to my core. Only God can help us through COVID. 
with all the great minds that have, have come in place and with everything that's happening. Only God can help us. But Jesus Christ is saying, sit, be quiet. Stop looking at right, left, and center, up and down. I am your only instructor. You are all students. So Jesus Christ has created a new class, a classless class. We are all students. Over there, all students. Over here, God, Jesus. And then he said, I am your Messiah. I am your Messiah, the promised one, the one who put his life well, who will put his life on Calvary? Who will die for your sins? I am that one. So stop. Be quiet. It's not about you. It's not about your burden you're going to bear. It's not about those who will not help you. It's about your faith. Will you look at God as your father this morning? Are you in your bedroom this morning? Are you in your car? Do you think that now that you turn to hear this message comes of you? Jesus is saying, no. He's saying, stop, pause, my people. It doesn't matter if you're in Zimbabwe or Addis Ababa. It doesn't matter if you're in Jamaica or you're in Elgin. Jesus is saying, stop, you're all students. He just slumped us in. I love this passage. I really love this passage because he was at, in Jesus' time, he was talking to the Jews and the Gentiles. And he says, I don't care where you come from. You're all students. And he says, I am your only teacher. I am your Messiah. And he did it on the double. He said, I'm your only instructor. I'm your only instructor. Be quiet. So the good news is, God loves us so much that he wants to father us. Jesus Christ is giving us the good news in this passage. He's saying, I want to father you. No matter how old you are or how young you are. I want to father you. Don't care how, how broken you are. Don't care how sick you are. I don't care how hungry you are. Don't care how rich you are. Our God wants to be our father. Oh, what, what greater love that comes from a father, a protector, a guide, a caregiver. God wants you to look at him as your father. But what a great message. The great message. Someone gave his only son, but to be died on a cross so that you and I, regardless of what our, our load is, if we are thieves, if we are paupers, if we are nurses, if we are frontline workers, he's saying, I will instruct you as to how to get this done. Come on, come with me. That's what Jesus is saying. That's the good news. God loves us. He gave his son so that you and I, when COVID comes and things come, when our individual pandemic comes, when our worldwide pandemic comes, God says, I love you. I want to father you. Jesus Christ said, I will give my life so that you can be instructed. My friends, this is what the scripture is saying. And I identify with this scripture. I went to an island in 2017 on a mission trip. You know, we're students and we, we think we, we know everything. You know, we are so pumped up because we're, we just learned how to systematically fix things using the gospel or using some form of religion. And in, on that three-week trip, everywhere we went, there was poverty beyond anything that you can imagine. Babies hungry, um, girls tied up, no, no education, no water, nothing. But what hit me on that trip, what grounded me and took me back to the scripture, we visited the one hospital in the major capital of that island. And on entering the hospital, you could smell the stench of human remains. And when we got to the hospital door, the one doctor on duty, he said, there's a strike and it's the grounds people and the family members who have to attend to the sick. So, you know, we're still pumped up. We're Christians, we're disciples. We went back home. We went back to our hotel and we decided what 
we can do to fix this country, you know, to help this country. But on the last night, there was a team from the island who followed us around for the three weeks. We had a lovely dinner with them. And when we had that lovely dinner, they were there with us and, you know, fellowshipping and everybody was laughing and having a good time. Then it came time for the meeting. When we started to sit around the table, I noticed a silence, you know, that deafening silence. And I thought something was wrong. And every one of those persons from, those, from that island said to us, they looked us in the face, and they said, do not help us when you leave here. Do not send anything to us. And they said, we have decided to put our burdens to God, and we trust in God that God will find a solution. My brothers and my sisters in Christ, those of us in the crowd today, if you are listening, have you decided to make God your father? Have you decided to trust God as that supreme being that will take your burden? And even when you're taking that burden on your back, this great God will make you so humble, will give you all that you need, that you will take your burden and you will serve him or her, whatever you call God. But I know that God is supreme being. Have you, have we, Dawn, have you decided? I stand here today and say it's not easy because it takes faith. It takes the faith of a mustard seed to look beyond ourselves and to say to God, I'm going to make you my father. And to say to Christ, I trust you as my, my, my Messiah. I'm going to give you my burden. Is there one of us here today who wants to give Christ your burden? Who wants to give God your burden is their one. This is a lovely church. They have a lovely website. They have all kinds of prayer meetings and fellowship and all kinds of stuff. If you do not want to answer today, call someone and say, you know, I still struggle. And fellowship with that someone. But if you decide today that your burden is so heavy, where is your burden? Your burden is on your back. And you can't go no more. You can't go no more. I invite you to make God your father and Christ your Messiah. Because I trust that Christ will instruct you. Christ will instruct us. Christ will teach us. And I know for a fact that God our father loves us regardless. Is there one? Is there one? As I close, I pray to God, O oh Father, that we, wherever we are, we can thank God for the teachings of this scripture. We can thank God for the, the gift of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, as we seek to be humble in his name and his name only, Jesus Christ our Savior and our Redeemer. Amen. Okay, so this is the part where we get into the Holy Sacrament. And I thank God for this sacrament because that's where we can ingest the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. Christ 
our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient people, and we have not done your will. We have broken your law and rebelled against your love. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When you turned away, when we turned away and our love failed, you love, your love remains steadfast. You deliver us from captivity made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim re release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin, and death, and made us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On that night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. Pour out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. 
Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and our, on the gifts of bread and wine. Make them be the body, make them for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in holy church all honor and glory is yours almighty father now and forever amen amen and now with the confidence of children let us pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the power the kingdom the power and the glory forever amen because there is one loaf we who are many are one body for we all partake of the one loaf the bread we break is a sharing in the body of christ the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of christ Please be with me in prayer. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gentile or Jew, servant or free, woman or man, no more. One bread, one body, one Lord of all, one cup of flesh.
Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his holy name. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. Have a great week.